Morning church fam, how are you today? It's really great that you are here. There's so many things around Nelson that are actually closed or restricted. But the exciting thing is, church is open. It is online and beaming directly into your lounge room. This is one of the few times where you get to actually bring a cup of coffee to church. But it's all good because we've got a message from Pastor Ingrid. We've got YWAM leading us in worship this morning. And it's going to be exciting times. We just really wanted to say that we are glad you're here and that you are important to us. If there is anything that you need during this time in lockdown, we would love to see if we can help you out. So drop me an email at shane at artify.church. The email address will be on the bottom of the screen here. Shane at artify.church. Tell us how you're doing in lockdown. Is everything going okay? And is there anything you need? And we will see what we can do to help you out. You see, these are difficult times. These are times of uncertainty. But we have a God that knows everything and he is in control. We only have to believe that he is in control because he tells us that he is. He also says that he did not give us the spirit of fear. But he gives us the spirit of love, power and a sound mind. Whenever you start to get fearful about what's going to happen tomorrow or what's going to happen next week, I just want you to remember that God did not give me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Like I said, we've got Pastor Ingrid bringing the message this morning, and we've got YWAM Band leading us in worship. So I encourage you, put your coffee down, stand to your feet, and let's worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Take it away, YWAM.
That's so awesome. I hope that got you guys jumping up and down in your lounges this morning. Thanks so much, YWAM. It's so great to have you guys just up the road from us. Hey, we're heading into a new season, and after that pouring rain that we had, the sun came out today, and we had a beautiful, glorious, almost spring day. And as we experience that in the natural, I pray that you feel that in your spirit this morning. You know, Joel chapter uh, 2 verse 22 says, Surely the Lord has done great things. It talks about pastures and the wilderness becoming green. It talks about trees bearing their fruit, the fig tree and the vine yielding their riches. Because he gives us the rains in autumn and the rains in spring. And the threshing floors will be filled with grain and the vats will overflow with wine and oil. So be encouraged this morning. It's a new day. It's a new season that we're walking into. And it's been so encouraging to see the common themes in the videos that I've been sent today. Uh, it's like the blessing of God is really on what we're doing here, because we're doing it to honour Him. I trust you've received your newsletter this week via email. If you haven't, please drop us a line at info at artify.church, and we'll send one out to you. It looks like we'll be at level 3 on Wednesday, which is progress, but we won't be able to meet together in groups at least until we get to level 2. So... The Women's Ministry Group, Men's Ministry Connect Group, Dodson Valley Connect Group and Emerge Youth will all be meeting at their regular times online. Please check with a leader for info on how to join those meetings. Northgate Connect Group and the Filipino Connect Group will be taking a break. And Worship Group and Nelson Adults will advise closer to the day. But right now, Ray and Heather want to bless you with a song that they've recorded. You are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words, too wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depth of your love? You are beautiful beyond description, Majesty enthroned above. And I stand, I stand in awe of you. I stand, I stand in awe of you, Holy God, to whom all praise is due, I stand in awe of you. Hey, we serve a generous God. Amen, church? You know, 1 John chapter 3 says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. Isn't that an awesome promise? He lavishes his love on us. And we have an opportunity with our tithes and offerings to say, Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. And that's such an awesome privilege. So, you know, if you don't know how to give, then you can pop an email to the church office, which is on the bottom of the screen. Otherwise, let's just give thanks right now for these tithes and offerings. God, we thank you that you lavish your love on us. We thank you that you call us your children. And it's out of the gratitude of our hearts that we give our gifts back to you today. We pray that you would take them and use them to bring glory to your name in this city and in this nation and in the nations of the world. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. I didn't know we were saying amen. Hey everyone. Hi church family. Greeting church family. Hi everybody. Hello out there. Good morning church. It's nice to see you all. Let's wake up our sleepy souls. Welcome along to church this morning online. Even if it's remotely. At the sunny Nelson Beach holiday camp. I hope you've had a good week. I hope you're, you've had a good week. I hope all is going well for you. I hope you're having a great time and enjoying Looking forward to the weekend. Uh, Living the dream. Being at home with your bubble. It's certainly been very strange, hasn't it? I just want to say thank you to everyone who's been praying for our family uh, for over sickness. Uh, we are getting better. As you can see, Lily's not here with us today. She's with her mum, but I found a good 
family resemblance photo. So you can see she's doing really, really well. Ethan made a mean pavlova. Caleb has made some chocolate fudge. And I made a birthday cake. We are living in very uncertain times. We'd just like to leave you with an encouraging thought. From Matthew 7 verse 8. To Timothy 1 7. God is the same yesterday, today and forever. Everyone who keeps on asking receives, and he who keeps on seeking finds, and to him who keeps on knocking it will be open. He gives us power, love and a sound mind. Keep on keeping on. No matter what is happening, he is in control. His word has power and gives us peace. And we can trust him. The wonderful Lord Jesus who died and rose again and gives us life. I just really hope we can all get back together again really, really soon. It'd be really great to see your faces again. In the meantime, take care of each other. Hope you all have a great week. And uh, we'll see you back when uh, we're out of all these lockdowns. Hopefully soon. God bless. Have a great morning. See you later. See you on the flip side. Bye. much YWAM team for leading us in praise and worship this morning. We really appreciate you and what you bring uh, to our church with our relationship with you. Well, good morning everyone. I trust you're keeping well and hope that you have been able to find something or some things that you are grateful for during this lockdown. I'm not preaching about thankfulness or gratitude this morning. But even when we might be struggling or facing challenges or trying to make difficult decisions, there is always something to be thankful for. Two of the things that I'm thankful for this week is that Mark and I have had more time together than we might usually because he's had a couple of days off of work in this past week and we've been able to sit down and we've been able to enjoy watching church online with, with all of you. You know, 1, Corinth, 1 Thessalonians, sorry, chapter 5, verse 16 says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 
Today we're continuing on with our series through the Sermon on the Mount, looking more closely at the Lord's Prayer, or some people call it the Disciples' Prayer. And today um, I want to start my message by asking you, do you find it easy to do God's will? Are there things that God has told you to do that you have not done? Or maybe he is telling you not to do things that you continue to do. Do you struggle sometimes with doing the right thing? Do you struggle sometimes with even knowing what is God's will in the situations that you might be facing and the decisions that you may have to make? I've been there, especially in things that are not expressly written in God's word. Ever face temptation? Maybe it's eating too much. Maybe it's not being honest with people or buying something that you just simply cannot afford. Henry Blackaby said, our difficulty is not that we don't know God's will. Our discomfort comes from the fact that we do know his will, but we do not want to do it. I think that is so often true. Not always. Sometimes it takes time to discern by the Spirit of God what He is saying. For example, you can't read the Word and it's going to tell you the person that you are going to marry. However, it does say, don't marry a non-Christian, a non-follower of Jesus. And it does talk about the character traits of a godly husband or a godly wife or a godly person. And just because someone tells you to do something or tells you that God is telling you to do something, it doesn't mean that he is. I remember years ago when a much older man decided that I was the one that God had for marriage for him. He's not in this church, but he was coming along to our services for quite some time. In fact, he told me, that marrying him was God's plan for my life. I was horrified and petrified and said, I don't believe that that's the case. And he said, well, you can have God's A plan or B plan for your life. And obviously marrying him was God's A plan. He then told me not to speak to anyone about it. In this case, it was simply control and manipulation. And wanting what he wanted. You know, as followers of Jesus, we are called to follow him and not simply what someone else says or desires for us because all of us can be deceived or misled by our own desires and thoughts. So this morning, the title of my message is Your Will Be Done. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus was teaching his disciples to pray. And I love that one of the focuses of his prayer was for God's will to be done here on earth as it is in heaven. He said, Matthew 6 verses 9 to 13, In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and do not lead us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen your will be done on earth as it is in heaven you know the thing about heaven is that in heaven god's will is done God is sovereign. God is the one who is worshipped and praised. And because he is holy, there is no sin in heaven. There's no sickness in heaven. There's no pain in heaven. God's will is done in heaven. And when we are praying to God, our Father, our focus should be on him. And as we pray and focus on him by praying, his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven, we're reminding ourselves that actually as followers of Jesus, we are called to do his will here on earth and to pray that his will is done. Timothy Keller, a pastor, said that the basic purpose of prayer 
is not to bend God's will to mine, but to mould my will into his. Ever prayed a prayer to try and bend God's will? Robert Law said, prayer is a mighty instrument, not for getting man's will done in heaven, but for getting God's will done on earth. Warren Worsby said, we have no right as followers of Jesus to ask God for anything that would dishonour his name, delay his kingdom, or disturb his will on earth. And the great news is that when we are struggling to do God's will, that we are not alone. We can pray for help when we struggle and wrestle with overcoming sin and temptation in our lives and with doing what he is commanding us to do. You know, I love that Jesus said he would send another helper to be with us forever to help us and lead us and guide us into all truth as we seek to obey him because we love him. I love that we have the Holy Spirit as followers of Jesus and that he helps us and can illuminate truth to us that he can lead and guide and comfort us. Billy Graham said the will of God will not take us where the grace of God cannot sustain us. Dietrich Bonhoeffer who was martyred in Nazi Germany for his Christian beliefs said being a Christian is less about cautiously avoiding sin than about courageously and actively doing God's will. I love that. Being a Christian is less about cautiously avoiding sin than about courageously and actively doing God's will. Maybe you're listening today and you find it really hard to do God's will. I want to encourage you that you are not alone. You are in very good company. Jesus himself struggled to do God's will because he knew that doing God's will was going to cost him. It was going to be painful. He was going to experience something that he'd never ever experienced before, which was both taking on our sin and complete separation from the Father on the cross as God judged that sin. Jesus knew his purpose. Jesus knew the will of God. Jesus knew that he had an assignment, a specific assignment here on earth and told the disciples in John chapter 4 verse 34, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. We know when he died that his final words were, it is finished. And he bowed his head and he gave up his spirit. In John 19, 28 to 30 is where you can find that. I want to read to you today the account of Jesus as he wrestled in prayer with his father about the father's will for his life as he came to the end of his time here on earth. Because I think that it can encourage us when we're facing challenges and difficulties and following God's will for our life. So if you have your Bibles, it would be great if you would turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 26. And I'm going to be reading from verse 36. So Matthew 26, reading from verse 36. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. Now Gethsemane means oil press. If you can imagine, the, the olives have to be pressed hard in order for the oil to be released. And he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and he prayed, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and he prayed, My father, if it is not possible for you for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, 
may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed the third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to the disciples and he said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. There are three things that, that I find encouraging about the story and I think can encourage us. Number one, Jesus knew what it was to wrestle with doing God's will, to doing his Father's will. Number two, Jesus prayed to God as his, fa his Father as he was facing this challenge of doing his Father's will. And yet he was able to pray, yet not my will, but yours be done. Three, Jesus knew what it is to... Be, feel alone and to feel abandoned by the, his disciples at his time of greatest need. His disciples fell asleep. They couldn't even stay awake with him. And he goes, can you not even keep watch with me for one hour? Can you imagine how Jesus is feeling? He's facing death and the closest people to him have fallen asleep. They can't even stay awake to pray. He's alone in his anguish and pain and suffering. And it can feel like that sometimes in our lives too. We can feel alone in our greatest hour of need when we're wrestling with difficult decisions, hard decisions that we have to make. I'm encouraged by what Jesus went through because it reminds me that he knows what it's like to feel abandoned, to feel alone, to feel like you have to make some decisions, some decisions we have to make alone. One of them is, is Jesus going to be my Lord and my Saviour? But because of Jesus' death on the cross, because he died and he rose again and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God, he is able to make intercession for us. He is able to help us. He's able to identify with us because he overcame. Hebrews 4, 14 to 16 says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You know, maybe you're a new follower of Jesus or you're a fairly new Christian and you're wondering, well, how can I even know God's will? One of the ways that we can know God's will is revealed as we read the Bible and we see what God says about situations. Psalm 119, 105 says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. It helps us to follow God's way. King David in Psalm 140 verse 8 said, I desire to do your will, O God. Your law is within my heart. Billy Graham said, if you're ignorant of God's word, you will always be ignorant of God's will. You know, when Joshua in the Old Testament, in the book of Joshua, was asked by God to lead the children of Israel into the promised land, God instructed him in Joshua 1, 7 to 9 to be strong. And courageous. Be careful, God said to Joshua, to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything that is written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you forever, wherever you go. You know, God never told us that following Jesus would be easy. That being a disciple would be easy. That doing the will of God would be easy. But often it's because we want our own way rather than God's way because we think that our way is easier or even sometimes better. But Hebrews 12, 1-2 says, 
Therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, perfect and pleasing will. It's important that we renew our minds. And one of the ways that we do that is simply by reading God's word. Find out what he says. That's his revealed will. Oswald Chambers said that God's will is hard only when it comes up against stubbornness. Then it is as cruel as a plowshare and as devastating as an earthquake. But what happens when we don't know what God's will is? That's when we need to be praying and asking God to reveal what he wants in a particular situation. You know, sometimes God's leading it. It simply comes through the Holy Spirit through our consciences, through circumstances, and through the, the encouragement and exhortations of other people. You know, God says in his word in Proverbs eleven fourteen that there is wisdom in a multitude of counsellors. We need to be listening to wise people and what they say by comparing. So we can, God's leading sometimes comes by comparing what we hear to the truth of scripture. And we can learn to recognise God's voice and his will for us in a situation So one of the ways that I often find that God leads me is through a sense of just peace about a situation or a decision that I need to make as I come and pray to him. You know, God is sovereign, but he's also given us free choice. And sometimes we might go through a difficult time because God actually has a much bigger plan for our lives. Joseph in the Old Testament went through terrible times. Joseph was sold by his brothers, his own brothers, into slavery. He was imprisoned because he was falsely accused of raping his master's wife. And then he's promoted to second in command to Pharaoh after telling Pharaoh the interpretation of his dreams. And he saved his whole family from death. I find Romans 8 encouraging. Romans 8 encourages me when I face difficult times and challenging times, when I feel hard pressed on every side and when there's pressure from so many places or even just one place. Because I can trust that God knows me and that God is working out his plans and purposes in my life. He's working things out for good even though it may not seem like it in the moment. Romans 8, 26 to it says this, in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. And he goes on to say, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those for God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Our God is a God of relationship. He loves you and he wants us to be intimately acquainted with him with his will and with his ways. God called us and loved us and loves us, but he doesn't call us to an easy life. He calls us to a life of obedience. Let us remember as we come to a close that we pray to God our Father, that we are to be praying from the vantage point of heaven. Lord, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let us pray. Father God, I want to thank you for every person who is listening today. I thank you, Lord, that you know everything about us. You know our hopes and dreams. You know our fears and worries. And I pray that by your Holy Spirit, you would continue to lead and guide us. Father, may we be willing to surrender our lives fully to you. May you show us clearly your will and decisions that we make. 
Bless everyone, I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. Be blessed and know that he is with you and he is for you and he's working out his plan and purpose in your life. Bless you all.